Good morning. Welcome to worship. It looks different in here, yeah? Doesn't it look nice? It is so beautiful. Uh, every, every Monday morning when the quilters show up and they gather in that space and they lay out the colors and they patch them together, they always do such a beautiful job. And I'm so thankful that we can gather and set them out in the pews. And today we, uh, we have a number of things happening. Of course, today is Mother's Day. We are going to have a blessing of the quilts in, in worship so that when we send them off into the world, we do so with the blessing of the community. And God, today is also Good Shepherd Sunday. So it's a, it's a wonderful day to be together, to worship, to give thanks, to confess, and to let the Word of God work upon our hearts, transforming us into disciples. Um, I invite you now, as we prepare for worship, we'll take just a couple of seconds as we center our hearts and minds to prepare to hear the word today. I invite you to stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one God who forgives all our sin and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin. Merciful God, I confess that I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what I have done and by what I have left undone. I repent of all my sins, known and unknown, I ask for strength to turn from sin and to serve you in newness of life. Cling to the promise. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives you a new birth. Through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives you all your sins. And Almighty God, strengthen you and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us sing. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. i 
you brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep. By the blood of your eternal covenant, make us complete in everything good that we may do your, world, your will and work among us all that is well-pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading today comes from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from Revelation, the seventh chapter. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders, and the four living creatures, and they fell on their face before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and honor and wisdom, glory and wisdom, and thanksgiving and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs, to the springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Word of God, word of life. children's message. Any children are welcome to come forward and join me up here. We have a special task today. A special job. All right, I, here's what I'm going to need. I'm going to need you guys to come sit up here and look that way with me. Can you do that? We're all going to need, I need some over here. Got a couple over here and a couple over here. 
Do you see people? Yeah, yeah, there's people out there, aren't there? What kind of people? Weird people? (laughs) Older people? Yeah. There's one of those sitting right next to you. What's that? Children of God are out there. That's right. There's children of God out there. Anything else? Today, today we celebrate Mother's Day. And you know what I see when I look out here? What do you think? I see moms, yeah. And did you know moms come in a whole bunch of varieties? They come in amazing varieties. In, in fact, our first hymn today... Our first hymn, called God, Mother. Do you ever think about God as mother? It says, mothering God. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, it's kind of wild. So I look out here, and what I recognize is that everybody in here, everybody in here has been a mother one way or another. The guys, the girls the older ones, the younger ones, everybody has had an opportunity to mother someone else. And so we have a job because as people who have been blessed by mothers, we're going to bless all of these folks today with a prayer. So I'm going to say a prayer, but this is what I need you guys to do because prayers are most effective when you're going like this. So can you guys put your hands up like this? We're going to pray for everybody in front of us, and it's you that help make it effective, okay? Are you ready? I'll say the words, and you keep your hands up. And all you folks, you're the recipient of this Mother's Day blessing, okay? So receive this in the spirit of the gift. This Mother's Day, we give thanks for loving, wonderful mothers who have given their children so many amazing gifts. We give thanks for new mothers welcoming new life into the world. We give thanks for those who choose their children, for adoptive and foster parents who model the adoptive love of God. We give thanks for aunts and grandmothers and neighbors who share maternal love with so many children and for far too often overlooked stepmothers. We give thanks for those who choose to remain without biological children sharing love with the world in many ways. We pray for the many mothers who have had to bear the unimaginable burden of burying a child and those who have borne the silent grief of stillbirth or miscarriage. We pray for those who struggle with infertility, whose desire for a child is met with frustration. We pray for the mothers of children with special needs and chronic illness who know anxiety and exhaustion better than most. We pray for those who are given abuse and heartbreak by the ones called to love them. We pray for mothers who have made the difficult and loving decision to entrust a child to adoptive parents. And we pray for those whose mothers have died, who on this day celebrate and grieve their mother in her absence. Amen. And now we have a special greeting for mothers in the congregation. Happy Mother's Day. We thank you for playing with us. We love you. Hi. Hi. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you for all that you do. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Thank you for being amazing. We love you. We love you. <laughs> Hi, human. Happy Mother's Day. Hi, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Hi, Mom. Love you. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. Hey mom, happy Mother's Day. Thank you for all your joys, laughter, and your grace. I love you. Hi mom, happy Mother's Day. I hope you have an amazing Mother's Day today. And I'm excited to see you at the end of this week for your big 80th birthday celebration. Happy Mother's Day. Happy 
Mother's Day, Mom. Thank you so much for your endless love, support, and knowledge. I love you so much. And thank you so much for the moms out there. We really appreciate you. Thanks for coming up, joining me to bless those moms out there and make sure that you give away big hugs today, okay? Thanks for coming up. I invite the congregation to stand for the gospel acclamation. the gospel according to St. John the 10th chapter. At that time the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to them, said to him, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. I will give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Last Sunday in the Gospel text, as Pastor Nyla read it and preached on it, we hear Jesus ask this question. Do you love me? Peter responds with a vigorous threefold, you know that I love you. You know I do. Yes, I love you. You know that I love you. And we like Peter, were we to be asked that question, would likely respond in the same way. You know I love you. You know my heart. Yes, yes, I love you. It's a powerful question. Do you love me? It's, uh, it's one of my favorite songs and moments from the uh, musical and movie Fiddler on the Roof. That's I'll come back to that in just a minute. But that question of, do you love me? I wonder, however, when this usually comes up, it comes up around a question, not around certainty. We ask the question about, do you love me, when there seems to be a lack of evidence. And I wonder if that's not more our question for God than it is God's question for us. We, we are quick to respond, but we also look at the world around us. When you look at the world around you, the struggles, the violence, war, hunger, poverty, the financial worries, the political garbage, pandemics, cancer, accidents, mental illness, anger, death, God, do you love us? Last Sunday, we heard about Jesus with the disciples at the Sea of Galilee. And this question comes up after the resurrection. This comes up to Peter after his threefold rejection of discipleship. Today, we hear from John chapter 10. And chapter 10 of John is the chapter on the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. It's just before 
this text. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, and today we read, my sheep hear my voice and follow me. Last week, after Peter says, yes, I love you three times, Jesus says, follow me. This Sunday, when asked if he is the Messiah, if you are the one from those who just want a simple, clear answer, wouldn't it be nice to have just a simple, clear answer? Are you the love sent from God that will finally save us? Jesus responds, I have told you. I have shown you, and yet you do not believe. In, uh, in Fiddler on the Roof, when Tevye asks Golda, do you love me? Her response initially is, <laughs> we've been married 25 years. <laughs> Just, why are you asking me this now? And then they go into this lovely song and she says, for 25 years I've washed your clothes, cooked your meals, cleaned your house, given you children, milked your cow, and after 25 years, why talk about love now? Her response to the question of do you love me is to name all that she has done for him, with him. That always makes me think of Psalm 23, the text read this morning. It's a text that more and more has become, and it did not start this way, it has become a beloved funeral text. We sang it as a part of the service yesterday. And in my last congregation where I was doing 30 funerals a year, I read it enough that at one point I grew weary of Psalm 23. Somewhere in the midst of that, it got a hold of me. Sometimes scripture does that. Those places that we begin to ignore or find frustrating or are tired of hearing. When you keep going back to it, you discover the beauty that is there that you missed. What grabbed me was that when you look at the text, when you look at Psalm 23, there is only one actor in the entirety of the psalm. There is only one doer. Read it. Just dwell on it, but listen to it as I read it to you again. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Though I walk through the darkest valley, the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. God acts. He makes me lie down. He leads me. He restores me. He leads me. He is with me. He prepares. He anoints. God acts, and I am nothing but a recipient of a gift. The salvation promised at the end of Psalm 23 comes not because I have done such an amazing job, but because I am loved that deeply. Because of God's actions, because of God's presence, because of God's love, we can walk without fear. We can find abundance and comfort. We can dwell in God's house forever. And what did we do to get it? nothing we are the sheep we are the ones 
God loves, and because God loves us, God acts for us. In the story of the disciples at the seaside from last week, even as we sit here today, maybe we wonder whether God loves us, even as we are asked about our love. Are we living out the love we profess for God? Are we conveying that love given us in what we say and what we do? Do our lives reflect that or do our lives reflect simply more of what the world offers again and again and again, which is not God, not gift? We seek the God who chases down the one, the one who leaves the 99 because every life is that precious, every life is that valued. The one that went astray, the one that got lost, the one that was confused, the one that acted just like, just like sheep act, God seeks out and brings back. When Jesus asked those questions of Peter, do you love me, Jesus had already revealed the great love of God that for us went to the cross, defeated the powers of sin, death, and the devil. Jesus has acted for you. He has already loved the hard to love, already healed the wounded, restored the separated, freed the bound, given hope to the outcast, and called the dead back to life. Jesus lived the love of God up close and personal and it is what in the end brings about his death because love that close, that intimate, that personal often gets offensive. But they haven't earned it. But they haven't done enough. But they haven't lived right. But they haven't spoken right. But they haven't... So much easier to just take it out of the, out of the space. And again we hear, do you love me? Maybe, maybe you do begin to wonder, how has God's love for you affected your living? Has your life reflected, mirrored what God did for you that reveals his love? Are you willing to love others in that exact same kind of love? Unmerited, unearned, frustrating humans that surround us. Will we live out that kind of love for the one that went to the cross for us? See, God loved us and acted for us when we were sinners. To set us free from the demands of the law. To be claimed by the power of the gospel. God loved us when we were enemies of God. Going to the very cross. To the place of death. And speaking from there. Words of forgiveness to those who struck the nails. To those who cried for his death. To those who derided and dismissed him. As unloving and unpresent. And if we want to experience, experience, not earn, not merit, not claim, but experience the love of God more fully in this life, experience the salvation that has already been given to you as a gift, experience living in that kingdom, it will happen in living out for others that same love that has already been lived out for you. By the one who says to us today, I have told you. And invites us to believe. Invites us to trust not just the words, but the actions. He has told us, he has shown us, and has given us the love of God. We are already free. We are already loved. We are already living in the kingdom of God right now, are we willing to look for it? Are we willing to live like it? Are we willing to set loose the kingdom of God in the world by living a love that is greater than we deserve, but receive nonetheless? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. And Jesus says, I have. 
for you. Amen. Let's sing. invite you to stand if you are able. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Gentle shepherd, enable your church to respond to the voice of Jesus. Give us unfailing trust, afraid, unafraid, to join in Jesus' work of renewing all things. God, in your mercy. Amen. Gentle shepherd, feed your people at the table of creation. Prepare a safe place for those whose environments are dangerous or unhealthy. We pray especially for those making difficult journeys. 
Bless your creation for the sake of every living thing. God, in your mercy. Gentle shepherd, warm the hearts of all who celebrate and all who mourn on Mother's Day. Accompany those yearning to be mothers. Help us to heal from broken family relationships and open us to receive your nurturing love from all who serve mothering roles in our lives. God, in your mercy. Gentle shepherd, seek out those who weep while they await healing or consolation. Set people in their path who can provide the care they need and wipe away every tear from their eyes. God, in your mercy. Inspire the words of prophets and saints who employ innovative imagery to stretch our understanding. <clears throat> Send Christ to instruct us with motherly care. God, in your mercy. Enfold us in the great multitude of the saints from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages. Wash us in your saving grace every day, guiding us to your waters of life. God, in your mercy. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share the Lord's peace with one another. Thank you for muting me. That was well done. <laughs> uh, I just have two notes that I want to make as we, uh, for our ministry notes this week. First, this coming Saturday is the day of service, and there is still room. If you haven't had the opportunity to sign up, I encourage you uh, to take a look at the table in the narthex as you leave. Look for an opportunity to be God's love set loose in the world. And the second note is this. We need to make sure we bless these quilts before we send them out. And so we're going to take a minute because these are an act of offering. So as a part of our offering, as we come into that, we are going to bless these quilts. So I invite you to put your hand on the quilt that is in front of you or behind you or anywhere near you. Um, and we are going to speak a word of blessing. In the midst of it, I will say, repeat this, and then I, right? You know your part? That's when Lutherans nod their heads. Okay. Uh, I will invite you to repeat after me in those places. God, our neighbors around the world are in need of hope. Your spirit is a mighty force. Your whispers of hope bring light into the world. Open our hearts and hands to see your presence in our neighborhoods and across the world. Congregation say, help us speak words of hope. God, we give you thanks for the pieces of fabric, thread, sewing machines, and items collected. May their presence be signs of hope. May these quilts wrap our neighbors in unending love. And the congregation, please say, help us reach out in hope. God, we give thanks for all the hands that fashioned hope into a quilt, for the hands that collected and sorted and cut and sewed for the hands that continually open wider so that no one feels left out. Congregations say, help us see hope. God, we ask you to guide the staff and partners at Lutheran World Relief. May their voices and hands be a beacon of hope. Keep them safe. Keep them filled with your strength and perseverance. Congregations say, 
Help us share hope. God, be with our neighbors who will receive these gifts. May they be wrapped in love. May they taste your goodness. May they touch signs of your hope. Whether or not we know their names or where they live, they are our neighbors, our brothers and sisters in Christ. We pray this in the name of Jesus, the one who is our hope. Amen. Let us now worship God with our offering. Please stand if you are able. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ Christ has died. Christ Christ is risen. risen. Christ Christ will will come again. again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us. We pray, living God, that you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your presence, in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, all are welcome here at God's table of grace. And I would like to ask for a second um, communion assistant. Thank you, Margaret.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and always. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, strengthen your faith, increase your hope, deepen your love, and free you for service. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thanks be to God.